in a cave. Psalm 57 may not have been written in a cave, but it reflects David's experiences in caves. In a cave, David experienced a wonderful event. God gave him a song that was full of God's presence and power. Why did God allow him to go through such adversity? Because he learned things about the Lord that he would never have known otherwise. This is why the Lord allows us to go through trials. Psalm 57.5 Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. David referred to God 21 times in Psalm 57's 11 verses. Be exalted, O God, he said twice more. This psalm is divided into two parts by this repeated refrain. David reveals that we can learn lessons from our life's cave experiences. Number 1. The Calamities That Trouble Us Psalm 57.1 To the chief musician, set to Do Not Destroy, a miktam of David when he fled from Saul into the cave. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge, until these calamities have passed by. David began his psalm with a prayer to the Lord for mercy. He needed God to intervene. David referred to his problems as calamities. Saul's pursuit of him resembled a violent storm. David realized that the cave was not the source of his safety. The true refuge of a believer is not a place, but a person, our Lord God. David also described God as protecting him by hovering over him. Did David imagine God to give him wings? No. This is a lovely and biblical figure of speech. David was not implying that God has literal wings, but rather illustrating God's protective care for his children. The image can be found throughout the Psalms. Psalm 17, 8 Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 91, 4 He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. When life's calamities strike, we can flee and hide beneath the wings of our omnipotent God. That is exactly what he wants us to do. Jesus wished for the people of Jerusalem to accept him but they refused. Matthew 23, 37 O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her! How often I wanted to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Psalm 57, 2 I will cry out to God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. David then declared that he would cry out to the Lord, whom he referred to as God Most High. The name Elohim Elyon means Creator God. Genesis 14, 19-20 And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Regardless of how high our difficulties stack up, God is higher. David was praising the God of action. To perform means to achieve or complete. Psalm 138.8 translates the same Hebrew word as perfect. David was claiming that God would carry out his plans for all of his children, not just him. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord never said that He only gives His children temporary life. He provides us with eternal life. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Psalm 57.3 He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. Selah God shall send forth His mercy and His truth. In the face of others' consuming cruelty, David demonstrated his faith in the Lord's help. Unfortunately, many believers devour the souls and reputations of others. In dealing with Saul, David relied on God's mercy and truth. That is precisely what the Lord gave him. 1 Samuel 24 Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness in En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. 
So he came to the sheepfolds by the road, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recess of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words, and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward, went out of the cave and called out to Saul, saying, My Lord the king! And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, Indeed, David seeks your harm? Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you. But my eye spared you, and I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, Yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you. Yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancients says, Wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore let the Lord be judge, and judge between you and me, and see and plead my case, and deliver me out of your hand. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. Despite having a perfect opportunity to kill Saul, David chose not to because Saul was the Lord's anointed. When we find ourselves in a cave surrounded by disaster, we can pray to God for mercy and truth. Psalm 57, 4 My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. David also bemoaned the fact that he was surrounded by lions. He was describing the peril he would face if Saul and his men tracked him down. Psalm 57, 5 Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. As a result, he requested that the Lord be exalted above the heavens and that his glory shine over all the earth. Psalm 57, 6 They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it they themselves have fallen. Selah David imagined his adversaries as hunters attempting to capture a lion or other wild animal. He knew Saul would use any means possible to find him, but he also knew God would thwart Saul's plans. Instead, his wrath would befall them, and their traps would catch them. We take matters into our own hands far too often, rather than remembering that our Most High God can take care of our enemies for us. Number 2. The Realities That Thrill Us David then transitioned from prayer to praise. Psalm 57, 7 My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. He stated twice that his heart was steadfast. He was emphasizing how settled and confident his outlook was. He cried out to God for mercy, and God had been faithful to provide him what he required. David, for his part, desired to be faithful to the Lord. Do we have a strong heart? Unfortunately, some Christians are as fleeting as butterflies. 
They flit from one flower to the next, from one church to the next. We never know where they will be. God wants us to be like carrier pigeons, with our eyes fixed on the goal of heaven. In the meantime, David transformed his cave into a concert hall, complete with instruments to accompany his singing. Psalm 57, 8. Awake, my glory, awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. With his praise, he promised to awaken the dawn. There is nothing wrong with beginning our prayers with a request for God's assistance, as David did. However, the key to victory is to have our lives resting in God. We will end up singing a song of praise to Him as a result of doing so and realizing His great power. And like David, each new day will bring a fresh opportunity to thank God for all of His blessings. Psalm 57, 9 I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. Not only was he going to praise the Lord, but David wanted to be a witness to others. Do we? When we get around our Christian friends as well as lost people, do they know the Lord is important to us? Psalm 57, 1 To the chief musician, set to do not destroy, a miktam of David when he fled from Saul into the cave. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge, until these calamities have passed by. Psalm 57, 3 He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Take note of the progression. David begged God for mercy, and God responded with mercy and truth. David now declares in 57.10 that more mercy and truth are available for future needs. It's no surprise that David had to praise the Lord. Psalm 57.11 Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. He again called out for God's exaltation. The word exalted means to be high and lifted up. He was saying, Lord, even in the cave experiences of my life, I want you to get the glory. I want people to see you.